Well, welcome um, to the November meeting of the Revitalization Trust Fund. Um, according to, oh, let's pick these back up and, so we can read the details here. Because we are doing a Zoom call, and hopefully we'll be able to continue to do this for a great uh, period of time. Um, but uh, the reason that we got to do this is basically because of the order uh, that came not from the phone, but um, uh, from the governor. And in order for uh, um, meetings of uh, can be conducted remotely, uh, consistent with the governor, uh, Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current, uh, due to the, well, not really current state of emergency, but uh, continuation of uh, the ability to be able to do uh, remote meetings um, that, uh, uh, we are holding this meeting publicly. Uh, the order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public will follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Uh, ensuring public access does not uh, ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. Uh, and this meeting will not feature public comment. Um, let's see. Uh, the, just as a reminder that this meeting is being recorded and that some of the attendees are participating in the conference, which is basically all. Um, accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see, uh, will not only be able to see you, but uh, take care not to screen share uh, anything that you would not want to be uh, recorded publicly. Uh, anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. And with that note, let's kick this off with an update on the Eaton Square Plaza banners and wall applique. So um, as you may might have noticed if you had strolled past the train station in the last uh, two weeks, that we did get the uh, the wall applique up on the wall. It is appliqued. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it, it looks great. Um, you know, they they had this process that we had to time precisely to the weather um, to be able to have it adhere. Um, and uh, we had cleared with the landlord that it was fine to be able to attach it to the wall. And he uh, felt that the preferred method was to be able to glue it, um, and as, as do I. So uh, I think the, um, uh, that window of opportunity happened. We had some, a fabulous spring day and uh, the uh, installers came out and used with uh, not only put it onto the wall, but then used a heat gun to be able to get it co to conform to the brick. So it's, it's got a good. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it just did a really nice job and it, uh, <laughs> it's, it's very cool looking the way it contours to the brick. So um, anyway, so that's up. Um, we did, uh, we're almost there with the, uh, the banners on Eaton Square Plaza. Uh, um, we went out the other day to be able to try to, to get the three banners up and as well as the QR code bracket. Um, the first one closest to where the tent is has both the banner and the bracket up. We, uh, it also gave us a chance to be able to, ex to experiment with whether you could actually uh, connect to the QR code if you were just standing there and you held your phone up to see if it would connect on the banner. And it did. You could literally point your camera at the uh, at the banner and with the code in the corner, it still found it and uh, and show and popped up a link. Um, so we have the uh, but we have the QR code bracket down below, which has the same code on it uh, so that anybody can just literally stand it, you know, face uh, face the bracket and just scan it very easily if for some reason their phone doesn't reach to the other. Um, but it does work. Um, and it um, connects up to the um, uh, to the story about the uh, Eaton Square Plaza and the uh, um, gallery and uh, and the newsletter. So uh, that is almost in place. The the other two uh, will be installed by the town, um, some, hopefully by the end of this week. Uh, the <laughs> The, the balls um, that you have to unscrew to be able to get these on were uh, exceptionally tight. <laughs> so so uh, I, I, they were sprayed with uh, WD-40 and then they're gonna come uh, there sometime either tomorrow or Friday and uh, see if they can uh, 
uh, wrestle them <laughs> off so they can get the other two banners up. Because uh, in those particular places, the banners have, you know, the, the, the um, banners haven't been changed in a very long time. And uh, on the ones that we do on Chapel Street, they get changed with frequency. So you don't have this problem. But over time, those guys can rust up a little bit. And so there's, they'll take care of that. So that'll put all of that up in the public. Um, one of the things that we want to talk about is um, how, what are the steps that we can do to be able to keep this project uh, in, uh, at the forefront of people's minds as we're going into you know, Thanksgiving and uh, into the Christmas hour and Hanukkah and holiday uh, time. Uh, because you know, this, if, you know, if we're gonna have an opportunity to be able to um, rally some donations for this and get some momentum going with the project, we're certainly in the season that we have the, you know, the greatest likelihood of being able to do that. So um, what are your thoughts on terms of being able to, uh, you know, keep this visible and, um, you know, and, and other, other opportunities that you think we might have to be able to get the, um, the gallery funded? Don't all pick up at one time though, because, you know, we don't, <laughs> Any thoughts? Throw them out there. <laughs> we are, are doing two two things already. I mean, with the uh, going for the grant funding, um, you know, that's one that's one aspect of it. So I, I think that everyone's aware of that. That um, we applied for a grant um, with the, the state uh, for a could be a significant amount of money to fund it, uh, the art gallery, and then. Um, there's probably a few other opportunities that we could look at, I guess, with the newsletter and promoting it, the art gallery through the newsletter that is being rolled out. Um, I, I wonder if there's any opportunity to partner with any local um, companies that are based in Needham, you know, maybe looking at some of the larger companies to see if they would be willing to um, contribute to such a dynamic and unique project that brings a lot of artists and creativity uh, to the to our community and see if they would be really sort of like uh, be able to provide some donations to it and then um, see if anybody would be willing to, you know, match that that contribution. So that there may be some opportunities there to look at just within our own backyard. Um, actually, uh, Amy, I was going to ask you, um, I know that there are, you know, some, some large projects that are going on, you know, are working their way forward in terms of uh, the heights. Um, and we certainly know that uh, the development of the Muzzy Ford property, you know, is continuing to move forward. Do you think that uh, this might be an opportunity to reach out to them um, to see if they would be interested in being able to, you know, to help out? This would be something that basically would, um, you know, put them on a plaque on the wall as being a sponsor uh, right in the center of downtown where a lot of people are going to see it. Uh, so it might be, a, might be something that might appeal to them. And of course, you know, the art gallery project itself is, you know, is, a, is not only a highly visible project, but also a very, um, you know, uh, just a very cool thing to be associated with, I would think. Yes. You know, that's, what do you think about that? I mean, it certainly can't hurt to ask. Yeah. Um, I, I, I couldn't say whether or not this might be of interest to them, but it, but why not ask? So I guess the question is, I certainly don't expect you to, to do this. I, I'm more asking so that, uh, um, would you be able to, um, connect me with people who are, um, you know, at the forefront of that project? Um, Thinking like the development team? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, development and marketing team. Yeah. Because, you know, those are the people who, you know, might look at this as saying, hey, this might be a way of being able to, you know, present some good, um, 
you know, goodwill back to the community itself. I mean, I know that they're going they're talk, they're going to do a lot of infrastructure things and and uh, um, you know and, and try to help uh, even you know uh, revitalize the area around the project they're doing. So I'm you know it's not certainly not diminishing that, but you know this would tie directly into the center of downtown. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could I could find contact information and share that. Sure, that would be great because I'd be happy to call them up and just you know, yeah, talk talk to them and see if it's something that they think would uh, you know would be of benefit for their public image and uh, just doing something you know solid for the community. So yeah, I mean I think that the you know certainly um, I would love to feel like the grants. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be able to uh, be of substantial help. Um, but, you know, they're a little like winning the lottery. So <laughs> you know, I think we need to do as many, you know, bring in as many resources as we can. And if we do uh, get funded by, um, uh, you know, any of the grants that, uh, you know, we have projects that we can apply the money to. Uh, so that's, you know, that's certainly not, you know, not an issue. So, and both of them, even though we spoke specifically about the project, uh, the one, the one in particular, which has a, a larger funding ability, um, you know, wasn't uh, super focused on the individual project. They were most, mostly wanting to be able to know that it was a cultural, uh, something that was really going to, to um, uh, be a positive impact on the, on the cultural aspects of the town. So if it were, you know, one of our projects versus another, I don't think that that would have any, uh, you know, any any effect if, in fact, you know, we found resources to be able to fund this uh, from others. Any other thoughts in terms of being able to to reach out to people and and uh, or tap into other resources that might uh, help us fund it? I mean, it's an eighty-five thousand dollar project, so it's not. You know, it's not something people reach into their wallet to do, um, but it's uh, but it's also not an enormous amount of money. You know, we're not asking for half a million dollars. We're just, this is a you know a project that could um, you know could be funded within even with a couple of sponsors. So, along with our own sort of email outreach that we're that we're working on, is there a way for your video to get like a weekly or biweekly? update on the Needham Facebook page, because I think that that is, is pretty powerful, at least within the, the, you know, the Needham community itself. And I think that it's great that it gets posted, but then it gets buried down way low in the feed. So if we were able to refresh this every once in a while, we may be able to catch people throughout the month, each month. All right. What I can do is talk to, uh, Talk to Mary Ruth. Um, she's been posting the things to uh, the Facebook page and the Needham MA. And I agree. I think I think that if this if the video um, and um, information about this uh, can get posted at least every week, right, onto that page yeah. uh, for the next you know six or six or eight weeks, that uh, you know that's you're I mean you're absolutely right. You know we we have posted the newsletter to the Needham MA page, um, but just posting it once means that, you know, right. several thousand people have never seen it in the first place. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so if it's not up there enough times to come into their feed or, or whatever, that they're not gonna see it. So I'll talk to Mary Ruth about being able to, to do that. And if she jumps on, we'll, we'll ask her directly. My other thought is, do you know how we have the old lights above the wall right now? I don't know if they're functioning, but it may be nice to get something now that it's dark early, we're in the holiday season, even if it's temporary lighting or like string lighting that we do on treats, something to just sort of attract some attention to the wall. Well, the lights aren't working. Yeah, and and um, actually I'm gonna try to find out if I can you know, speak to the landlord or if I can track down Charles. I think the issue is that because he has the rice barn basically closed yeah it's on the same circuit and so when they turned off the power 
they turned off the the power to the um you know to the timer that turned those lights on so um i'll see if i can find out from charles i mean there may be you know there may be other reasons why the lights can't come on because of the expense but uh, we could potentially put something temporary that's solar power even and it you know what i mean we could affix it to the wall or something get creative and and we could do solar if we didn't have power at that location well if you have any ideas in terms of what that might be uh, i do i'll let me brainstorm a little bit and i'll reach out with you that'd be great because um you know let's just pull together the options and then figure out what the best course of action is mm -hmm. all right any other thoughts brad carol no. Any possibility of getting a, a Republican rally around the art gallery? <laughs> <laughs> all, all two Republicans in town? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, those are some good ideas. Let's move on to the uh, uh, to the next. Um, we talked about uh, update on the newsletter. The next installment, I have I have built um, the newsletter around um, the uh, Ridge Hill wall mural, and I've also built another piece, another um, newsletter section um, around sponsorship for um, from Needham to the World profiles. Yeah, I also went out couple of days ago and shot um, video um, both in front of the uh, in front of the the, the um, uh, uh, Bob Larson profile and um, shot another one in terms of the art gallery uh, so we have a couple of uh, backup videos in, in terms of being able to reinforce that. So we could also use those on Facebook. I just have to do a quick um, edit uh, at the front and the back um, and they'll be good to go. So we'll have that as an additional resource. Um, the, I was, the thing that, I, you know, if, if we, well, let me just throw this out. The one concern I have in terms of, we got to do something in terms of the November newsletter, because we've promised that we'd send out once a month, which will be easy to do. Um, the thing that I wanted to run by you guys is if we're, you know, really trying to focus on getting the art gallery funded, um, does it dilute the focus by then coming out with the next newsletter talking about the uh, Ridge Hill wall mirror? Potentially. Potentially. What do you maybe, think? maybe for some, right? They'll they'll end up picking or choosing as opposed to. Or is it you know, or is it just giving them an idea that we have a number of projects in in play, and maybe they might just donate to the fund just to donate to the fund. Mm. You know, that's the. You know, that's the other side of it. What do you think, Brad, in terms of the. You're certainly sensitive to <laughs> trying to get a message out <laughs> in a focused yeah, way. I, I was just going to say, like, if, if it's really the priority, then we should just be hammering that away until it gets funded. Mm -hmm. Like so, the more you distract people, the more they're distracted. So if you're if you're hammering in a message, then you just keep on going and going and going, and, and that's what. So people tell you they don't want to hear it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but and, I mean, there's nothing. I mean, you can do a blurb about something else, but I would still keep it as the I would keep it as the focus. Mm -hmm. All right. Any uh, thoughts of what we might want to put in the newsletter then for, uh, cause I, I mean, you know, I can just create, I've got the template so I can just fill into whatever we uh, need to. Um, any thoughts about what we might do as uh, something that would be a, uh, another angle or segue on the, on the gallery that's, that would 
if you can just if you just have to focus on one thing. But I agree with um, what others have said that I think we do have to um, sort of hammer it and sort of like be promote it. Um, but we also have to be mindful of we don't want to run the risk of just be having a newsletter that only talks about one thing. So I think it has to have like eventually some kind of balance. Yeah, I'm, it's what I was uh, asking though is, is so if we were going to do that, it may, um, I can, you know, um, talk about the, about the gallery, but what other, what other ideas would, would you also incorporate into the November newsletter um, that might have, uh, you know, relevance to something, you know, to, it's got to have new information, not just, you know, the, uh, just not, not just the art gallery, but some other new relevant information, uh, not necessarily, and we're saying in this case, not necessarily relevant to funding a, you know, another project, because um, we don't want to make the whole newsletter just basically, you know, a, a funding plea, you know, all the time. We've, you know, can add, we need to have other things in it, which are just of interest. Um, should we include a, say a video about, you know, something like the circle of peace or, uh, or any of the other, we've got, you know, 14 different videos that we can use that tell the story behind the projects. Um, we could use that, uh, you know, you, you can use that, those videos to be able to tell those kinds of stories. And I'd come up with some kind of segue into the <laughs> the art gallery, so it so it always stays at the forefront in the in the um, newsletter, but always provides them something new and interesting to be able to see. Or maybe just do the 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 heavy chunk uh, initially of uh, about the 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 wall project. So it's like that's the first thing that they read; it's on their mind. And then if they choose to keep going, maybe we update them about the new bill, uh, the Bill Larson that we just hung up, or or the circle of peace something like that because you want to catch their attention in that first paragraph like this is really what we're driving here pay attention to this and then if you want to find out more then maybe one or two more paragraphs just to keep them enticed but not too long that we're going to lose their attention and they're going to read half of it and then move on all right well i can do yeah i can i can do an update on the uh, on the bob larson i'm just going to say that yeah, I mean that's timely think, as well. Uh, that we certainly have that. You know, if we're doing it four months, uh, we can always do that. Yeah. In the newsletter. Yeah. Okay. Well, and I will uh, put something together in the next uh, <clears throat> few days, and uh, then I will publish the next edition of the uh, <laughs> Project Insider newsletter. All right. This one, uh, just I'm just this has just come off my head here because this is the holiday season. Uh, I, I'm wondering how we could fit in because you might want to do something special because it is Christmas uh, it, and do it in favor of uh, someone you knew or uh, you know to just donate something in their, in their memory or whatever. Oh, that's okay. That's great. Any other thoughts? All righty, we'll move on to uh, the Bob Larson. Uh, we we had the event uh, last Saturday. Um, Bob had uh, a whole slew of people that uh, were all from his family, from uh, not only uh, his children, but uh, his children's children uh, and their girlfriends. <laughs> um, so it was, 
it was it was quite a gathering and by it was a absolutely perfect beautiful day uh it had been raining in the morning and then the sun, and then just right at 11 o'clock when we were just before 11 o'clock when we um were about to kick it off the sun came out it was beautiful and calm and and uh and warm and it just it it worked out spectacularly and uh, his family was really delighted uh they uh they just thought it was the most wonderful thing to be able to honor their their dad um you know he's uh he's down 94 he lives at wingate one and uh you know he was uh, you know able to tell stories and uh um and interject his humor as he always does and just had a, a certainly by all accounts a, a great time and uh so i think it was a wonderful way to be able to kick off the next uh, the next series, and uh, he was really uh, uh, thrilled that people would have considered honoring him in this way. So, you know, I think that uh, I, um, I think that that the you know people in the town as they start to walk by and they see these different profiles come up, uh, it'll be interesting to, to get more and more feedback. Uh, just by asking people, by the way, have you seen it? Um, and if all of us can do that, it's, you know, it's really valuable because, <clears throat> because uh, we'd really like to be able to get um, feedback on what people think about the project and, uh, and also just to see if they, um, you know, if, if they have any comments on, gee, are you going to do so-and-so? <laughs> because, especially people who have lived here in the town for a long time or some who, you know, who've grown up here, um, that they all know people from Needham who, you know, were all, all went out and did amazing things. And uh, we'd like to make sure that if we've missed anybody on our list, that we <laughs> can incorporate them. It also helps fill the pipeline. Yeah. Um, and so uh, we're, you know, if I was going to just also mention that if any of you have, um, you know, uh, businesses, uh, business leaders or people that you know in Needham uh, that might want to be a sponsor for one of these profiles, especially, you know, if they've either grown up in Needham or that they've had a business in Needham for quite a while, uh, reaching out to be able to ask just to ask them if they would like to sponsor the profile, uh, a profile um, would be great. Because the more of these that we can sort of get in the, you know, in the queue that are, you know, paid for in advance and, you know, just ready to be able to go up. Our next one is coming up um, for uh, changeover in April. And that segment goes April, May, June. Uh, let's see. We're on November, December, January, February. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah. November, December, January, February. So it's March. So it's March, yeah. April, May, June. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so um, um, I have uh, I have someone I think that is going to sponsor uh, for uh, the Tiger uh, profile, and so we're going to start to uh, I will get that nailed down hopefully within the next week or so, and from there if that uh, if that happens then we will start immediate work on being able to get the profile. Uh, to the graphic artist to see more to be able to start creating the next one. Uh, Jessica uh, has, you know, put together the the story, and uh, we've collaborated on being able to get a variety of different images for this one, which uh, which she now has. So we've got the resources pulled together. The next piece of the puzzle will be to uh, as soon as we get this, um, you know, a little further underway, is uh, that uh, to contact Tiger himself, which he lives here and still teaches at Berkeley. Um, and uh, uh, and um, connect up with uh, Gloria Grice to and the Needham channel to be able to do an interview. And uh, they've been actually very interested in being able to do this collaboratively. And they did a, uh, uh, a wonderful interview with uh, Bob Larson uh, two or three weeks ago that is now tied to the QR code that is on uh, on the wall right now. So if any of you go by to, you know, be able to check it out, make sure you scan the code and, uh, and watch the interview. 
So, and being able to keep those kinds of interviews, you know, whether they're, um, if the person is obviously alive, then, <laughs> then uh, that's uh, one version of it. Um, but we can also create profiles that could be, uh, you know, narrated that tell the story, uh, which could be done in conjunction with the History Center and, uh, and with the Needham Channel. So well, I think we've got a, you know, a good team uh, to be able to pull these things together and uh, you know, start getting uh, a variety of them in the, uh, you know, in the queue. So you know, reach out to people that you think might be you know, interested in being able to, to uh, you know, have, become a sponsor and have people uh, you know, uh, for have them and have them have the opportunity to be, able to be recognized as you know, doing something for the town that hopefully uplifts people's spirits. And, uh, and also shows the, the kids of the town that, you know, there are a lot of cool people who've lived here that went out and could, did cool stuff. All right, let's go on to the next one. Uh, let's see, Charles River cleanup. Uh, Brad, do you have any updates uh, directly? Yes, I finally got a hold of the right person to get it scheduled. It's actually Fabian. It's, uh, <laughs> it's Fabian Madison? Night. Fabian Desrelo. Fabian oh. actually just left his position. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so what I would suggest, Brad, is anything you send to Park and Rec, copy me on it and I'll follow up because I can help give a nudge. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Uh, so basically, I responded back to him to say that we would want to do it in early spring. So we'll get it lined up for early spring. <laughs> yeah, keep me in the loop. I'll help connect the dots on that. <laughs> okay. That's great. And uh, there was a note from Jessica saying that uh, she had contacted the high school just to verify that, um, you know, this type of project is definitely in line um, with uh, the, um, you know, community service points that they need and you know if we <clears throat> we basically i think if we can just get a a, a date set up that um Karis, um you know can commit the uh the crew to be able to do so that you know we have the dpw support and the truck and you know the safety measures for it um that from there uh you know we we can basically start rallying you know the volunteers behind it. So how many? How many do we think we need? What's the target number? Well, um, I would say that if you probably had, I don't know, uh, eight or ten people. Because you're going to be walking basically along the the wooden yeah. wooded edge. Uh, and as many people as possible being able to pick it up just makes the, you know, the whole effort um, right. go faster, so. Okay. All right. So um, I was going to say, and so do you want to also reach out to, <laughs> to Karis <laughs> and see if, <laughs> see if I, she I, can I, get a date? I did initially. She said I had to go through parks. She referred me to Parks and Recs when she finally. I got to do it with Parks and Recs first, and then with them, and then. So. All right. Well, why don't why don't we say this? And um, since uh, Amy has been terrific at being able to be a uh, a liaison um, for this, if the two of you can work together to just <laughs> figure out how we just nail down a date and a time and the crews that we need. Uh, that yeah. would be great, and you know we'll take it from there. I can't believe you left. <laughs> <laughs> Where would I find the right person? <laughs> hey, I got a great update. Oh, they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, well, that's all I've got. So, uh, so the next. Um, the next uh, piece is that uh, if if you remember, we had a um, a bench that 
uh, people that a, that a uh, sponsor wanted to be able to sponsor for uh, a coach that has been here and uh, that lived here in Needham for a long time and was, um, you know, w- was a great inspiration to a lot of the kids. And uh, we were having, um, we, it was, it's been a slow process to be able to get the approvals. Um, but we, uh, we uh, you know, Amy has been uh, also a great uh, liaison with all this and she, um, uh, and we got, we got the contacts uh, connected and we got the approvals now. So um, we now not only have an approval for this bench, but also um, to be able to uh, do the other benches that are still in that same area. Uh, that can be replaced so we don't have to keep going back um, each time to be able to get a, another approval uh, so they uh, they approved the whole thing so i've reached out to the to the donor um, and i've also reached out to uh, the company that makes the bench to find out what the current pricing is <laughs> since it uh, it seems to be going up um, and uh, uh, i'm going to reconnect with her uh, probably uh, if not uh, tomorrow, uh, during early next week, and give her the update on the uh, on the cost. And if that's okay, then we'll put in the order because right now they're saying that there's an issue apparently getting the castings done for um, these types of things. And uh, she, as she pointed out, she said, well, you, you probably don't want to do this until spring anyway, right? And I said, yeah. She goes, well, we should be okay by spring. <laughs> so it may be, you know, the lead time is now, you know, three or four, four months. Right. So, uh, but that's okay because, you know, we don't need it for three or four months. So, um, so that's, that's basically the update. So that was a, that was an awesome thing. And I'm hoping that I can report back in December that, uh, that, you know, they're uh, going forward with it and that we will uh, put in the order or that we have put in the order uh, and uh, we'll get that bench, you know, on its way. Do you know how many? Um, how many? How many benches? That... There's still two more that could be replaced there. Okay. There are three right now that are still uh, would you know we did, did the one before which was the one for Brenda Stark, um, yeah. and there are three more across that back section uh, that along the walkway, and uh, so we still have two more that uh, be beyond, beyond this one uh, that could still be done. Okay. So that's. So there's the good news for today, too. Uh, let's see. And we, you know, we talked a little bit about about sponsorships and ideas, but uh, you know, we'll. I think the, you know, uh, putting out the newsletter with a slant towards this, you know, the the art gallery project, and being able to um, reach out through Facebook and have some kind of regular thing that we post each week there uh, is certainly uh, another way to be able to get sponsorships and donations and drive as many people as we can to the uh, to the you know to the donate page um, mailing to you know to our own friends and and uh, people around uh, you know need them that uh, uh, so to make sure that they they have gotten the newsletter uh, have any of you had any success being able to, uh, you know, mailing the newsletter to any of the people you know? I mean, I know it's it's not easy. You have to sit down and figure out, you know, how what people might be interested and in, you know, and all that. But the reality is, you know, the more we can reach out to friends and family that are, you know, connected around the Needham area or would want to do something would want to do something to support, you know, uh, support us. Uh, you know, the more opportunity we have to get more people on the on the uh, on the mailing list, and building the mailing list is really an important aspect to this. Because, you know, if we could get the build the mailing list to have, you know, four, five, six hundred people on the list, we would really have an important reach to do that. Um, so, uh, anything you can you can think of that would allow us to be able to uh, you know, rally more people onto the list. If you, you know, even if you don't think of it now, 
um, please contact me. I'll, you know, I've got a lot of good tools to be able to reach out to people and uh, anything we can do to be able to support you and being able to, you know, trans, you know, transfer the newsletter or any of those kinds of things through links or videos or things like that. Just let me know and I'll help you in any way I can. I think, Paul, that, you know, since uh, there's a lot of people who still don't know NCRTF and mm -hmm. even some of my friends don't, well, who's that? <laughs> I, I think if we can post it as, as kind of information that uh, we want them to know what's involved with things like this, uh, that, that it would be easier just to, you know, that you want, we want them to know what's going on in town. Mm -hmm. So you're saying the approach is to basically write your friends and say, hey, you know, you see all these things going on in town, you know, uh, would you like, an, you know, uh, like, why don't you check out the newsletter to see, right. uh, you know, who the Revitalization Trust Fund is, the NCRTF, and that, that kind of approach? Yeah. That's easier for me to do. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, and do you need, uh, I've, I'd sent out the link to the newsletter, um, which is an archive link. Uh, do any of you need it again? Do you want me to send it out to the group again? Sure. I think that'd be helpful. Okay. Yeah. That'd be helpful too. Yeah, be helpful. Because, you know, the reality is it may be a monthly newsletter for us, but for all the people who aren't on the list, it's the first time they get it no matter what. <laughs> so, <Right. laughs> so we can keep, you know, sending out the archive letter to as many people beyond uh, the people who are on our original list um, until all those other people are on our, on our list. <laughs> We do also have an Instagram page, which I haven't actually updated much. Okay, and uh, so we have an account on Instagram, so I can post things on there as well. Okay, that'd be great. All right, great. Well, we have 111 followers. What's the, what's the, the at, that is just at, and how is it? NCRTF Needham. Mm. I think that's just as powerful as the Facebook as well. Okay. Well, great. Well, between the team of Mayor Ruth posting to the Facebook, posting to Facebook like Needham MA and that so on, and Brad taking on Insta, <laughs> that, uh, that we'll see what, what you know what kind of interest we can rally because um, we can and and Brad know that if you need um, you know images or other types of things. Um, just throw me some ideas as to what you'd like to do, and I'll supply the information for you. Yeah, let me, I'll look at the newsletter, see what I can pull from there to start with. And then, yeah, just send me anything you have thoughts on, any pictures, any whatever, of anything relevant. Okay. If it's a, a new banner is going up, let's post about it. If it's anything. Well, the Bob Larson, you know, profile, obviously. Yeah. We can do that uh, right away also. And um, if you, let's see. Yeah, I can send you, let me just make a note of this. I'll send you a picture of the Sunita profile and the Bob Larson profile. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Now we have 112 followers. <laughs> nice. All right, all right. And uh, one of the things I was also going to um, uh, 
just mention to Amy, uh, since she is now the, uh, as I understand, the master of the website, uh, mm -hmm. that, uh, that um, one of the things that we wanted to do was, bit, was now that we've got this program uh, off the ground, is to set the up- The website is actually not working right now. Right. I, I noticed that actually, I was trying to log on earlier the the town's website is down for some reason. I don't know if it's a server issue. Oh, it's the it's the whole town. Okay, got it. So it's not just us. Well, after it comes up, <laughs> 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 that uh, that um, I was wondering whether um, we had talked a little bit about this before, but uh, if um, Amy, can you set up a page on our page uh, where we'll um, we'll put up the images of each one of these new profiles as they happen. Absolutely. So we can have an archive there. Yep. Um, and um, and on the page, make sure we include a uh, a donate button. <laughs> like we always have a donate button. Yes. <laughs> Every page must have an opportunity to be able to donate. And if there's anything else that um, uh, you know that we uh, want to be able to make sure we get included on this. One of the things I thought was also a, um, uh, a link archive for the newsletters. Mm -hmm. Because I can send you a, um, uh, I can send you the link for the archive of each newsletter as it happens. Mm -hmm. And then we can start building them on that page also and have a newsletter page. Yep. I and think I've got we're gonna do that. And I've got uh, I've got uh, images that are the you know the image that we're using at the top of the of the um, uh, the newsletter page itself, which has sort of the the collage of the different projects and so on. That I can send you that image, and you could use that as the top image for the newsletter, uh, so that you know when they get the newsletter or they sign up. And I can also, of course, give you the link for them to sign up to the newsletter. Sure. <laughs> so I will uh, I will put those things together and send them off to you at the first of the week. Uh, let's see. Um, now I can also ask the um, public information officer to put a blurb in the town's weekly newsletter. Um, it's generally about one thing, but if it's if you want to talk about the new. Um, the new profile profile that was that was up and yeah. then in a future issue we can put something about the you know the revolving gallery yeah, yeah. so All if you right. have a blurb already written up on the bob larson thing if you want to just send it to me then i'll then i'll make sure it gets in the next newsletter okay i will do that When does that, when does the next newsletter happen? They happen every Thursday, but if you were able to get me information by Monday, that would be ideal. All right. And I'm gonna send you, make sure I've got all the things here. Uh, one, the uh, links for the newsletter archive and link to subscribe and image of top of newsletter. Plus we will get you the uh, write up on Bob Larson and the profiles. And I just shot a video for that. So can they can they include videos? She could probably just put a link to the video. I don't think we can embed the video inside the newsletter, but if you send me a link to the video, that could be included. Okay, I'll do the link video from Searchy. 
Yeah, I'll put it in. I can do that because the, um, the system I have will, will um, be the the host for the uh, for the video, and then it automatically puts in the um, subtitling. So with, if they're you know watching it on their phone, it'll automatically give that information to them if they don't have the sound on. All right. Well, we're just full of ideas this week. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> That's the idea, right? Yeah, that's the idea. Well, this is awesome. Well, thank you tremendously. Um, I don't, uh, does anyone else have any? We have obviously the, the date of the next meeting. We want to make sure you get that confirmed, Carol. Yes, December 15th. Okay. That works for everyone? Uh, All right. Well, awesome. Well, then, um, does anyone have any other thoughts or comments before we close up? And that's a resounding nothingness. <laughs> <laughs> so, so based on the nothingness. <laughs> Don't overeat on Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> yeah, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Uh, and so, um, uh, can, we should uh, basically uh, do we have a uh, uh, I, basically I'm ah, what do you call it um, proposing to close the meeting now uh, yeah. do I have to adjourn yes uh, just to adjourn uh, do I have a second? second second all right well we'll take this next second to say we are adjourned and thank you very much <laughs> for all and of Amy, what time is it for you it is 556. 556. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Well, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. 556 p.m. 556. Okay. Thank you. All righty then. Well, thank you. And uh, we will tune in December, and uh, I will be sending off the information to the uh, different people as, uh, as noted. <laughs> right. And thanks, Amy. As Thank always, you. did a great job. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye. Good night.